so I should say that in my clinical practice, I have not seen um, patients with lateral limb dissection for long uh, because we don't have a trend towards um, removing uh, the uh, lymph nodes which are impaired as well as uh, having the diagnostic uh, lateral limb dissection. The previous talks uh, brilliantly demonstrated the literature uh, review as well as their own data. There is a meta-analysis which was published this year and which also tells us about the fact that uh, take into account the published data, there is no statistical difference between overall survival and relapse-free survival in patients with and without lateral limb dissection, uh, the, so the difference is not there. But if you uh, come to uh, look closer at the situation, and when I started to read each of these uh, articles, the main criteria of patients with to differentiate um, just impaired or not impaired lymph nodes. First of all, they were selected by enlargement of the nodes if they considered that lateral nodes were uh, enlarged. They uh, were characterized as involved. And also, I considered the criteria that they used for uh, CT. Uh, for example, Unfortunately, this is uh, uh, the quality which we would describe as suboptimal. If you have a large field, then the resolution capacity is much worse. To see small lymph nodes or some, uh, or some deposits is uh, difficult. Of course, a big deposit, most probably over a centimeter, you won't miss. But suboptimal quality is uh, something we do not like. We like. Uh, much higher resolution of MRI, so the imaging is of better quality. If you look at the ESGAR guidelines on the status of um, um, uh, lymph nodes, this is an association of uh, radiologists of Europe who deal with uh, GI pathology. So first and foremost, it's my opinion, but I suppose it's an absurd. They say <coughs> that to detect a lymph node as a pathological, it should be either bigger than 9 millimeters or from 5 to 8 millimeters in diameter, uh, having two morphologically suspicious characteristics. If it is below 5 millimeters in diameter, uh, there must be three morphologically suspicious characteristics. Believe me, if you measure one lymph node, the same person can, uh, you can measure it just uh, differently. Within the difference of five minutes, it can be five millimeters, seven millimeters, and if I look at it in a completely different light, it will be nine millimeters. This is an utterly subjective criteria, and saying that the threshold of a uh, lymph node involvement uh, should be judged by the size is not correct. Excuse me. So, back in 2016, we conducted a trial, including 73 patients. Some of them were provided surgery first, as uh, they were primarily surgical. Patients uh, with no um, CRT. So uh, we have a protocol of uh, low field or small field MRI, small, uh, small field view. So that means a very small um, area of scanning. And then we uh, enlarge the field in order to see the growing uh, lymph nodes. So we compared the lymph nodes in uh, the high resolution and low resolution MRI. If we uh, take such threshold as five millimeters and everything that comes above, we consider it to be a lymph node. Then unfortunately, the precision of our method does not surpass 60 percent. If and it doesn't matter what kind of uh, resolution we look at. If we look at the morphological criteria, then we can achieve sensitivity and precision accuracy of over 80% detecting the involvement of uh, lymph nodes. So what is really uh, dangerous when we speak about the size of lymph nodes? First of all, we uh, conducted an in-depth analysis and we understood that the uh, overstaging of nodes uh, happens when a patient has uh, um, 
uh, when patient has uh, cancer. So overstaging is uh, grounded over the size of nodes, like over five millimeters, then overstaging will be over 35 percent. This is very high, especially in uh, early cancers. So what is the criteria that we can use in our clinical practice? If you have detected um, a lymph node and if you consider um, uh, MRI, then you should pay attention to whether morphological signs are described. So whether your radiologist tell you there is an MRI, M M MRI uh, signal change, there is uh, uneven capsule. So this is one of the signs. Then we should think about the anatomical localization. If it is, for example, external iliac lymph node, then most probably these are going to be hyperplasia. You should remember about the groups, which groups are most frequently impaired. And also, there must be some other unfavorable prognostic factors that you can see by MRI. If you speak about morphological signs, then uh, micrometastasis below one millimeter uh, is something we can uh, cannot see on MRI. We can see hyperplasia, enlarged uh, lymph node, but homogeneous uh, structure. Then pathomorphological slices, they uh, look very similarly to what we can see uh, on the, uh, if, we, if you see uh, bigger, uh, just uh, uh, bigger signals and uh, the capsule is intact. This is a criteria that we use as a, a sign of uh, lymph node involvement. If you can see full replacement of the uh, modified signal and we do not see fatty replacement, uh, we would say that it's um, mainly uh, involved. And uh, if it is three millimeter and above, we... Uh, another analysis which was published in uh, um, uh, 20... 19. Uh, 13 also uh, shows that most frequently the inner um, iliac uh, are um, uh, 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 they have, they have lesions in them and uh, also groups of different uh, uh, radiologists um, review each other's results and sometimes I see that radiologists um, sometimes are mistaken in localizing the lymph nodes. Where is the where are the lymph nodes? Um, everything that comes in the uh, anterior part, um, so everything that comes within the locking or occlusive, uh, the, the um, abs um, obturative lymph nodes, and uh, almost, uh, the, the, this is, uh, if we speak about low ampullar cancers, uh, they are almost never impaired. This is one of the examples. This is the uh, internal iliac uh, lymph node. You can see intact capsule and homogeneous signal, nine millimeters. Is it impaired? According to the ESGAR uh, criteria, the, yes. The same patient, this is an uh, uh, obturative artery. And you can see intact capsule over here, even the fatty center of this lymph node. But the size, uh, if you measure it by short axis or long, is 10 millimeters. It must be also impaired by the criteria that we propose. But this patient actually has uh, bullous adenoma, which we have been uh, following for two years. There, is no, there are no signs of deep invasion uh, by MRI data and multiple biopsies actually do not uh, have any signs of uh, process malignization. What should be done here? One of the examples, you should actually look at uh, the lymph nodes, not only um, take into account their size. This is uh, quite a big bulky tumor. This is T3, T4 stage, a small lymph node at the level of iliac vessels, seven millimeters, but it's intact. Uh, so this is uh, inner iliac uh, lymph nodes. Again, if I do not find the criteria which I uh, talked about earlier, I wouldn't even look at the obturative uh, lymph nodes if I don't see any other prognostic factors. What are those? The venous invasion and also involvement of the circular margin. If there are signs of venous invasion, most frequently the uh, tumor will go outside of the mesorectal fascia. 
So the signs of lateralization and the risks of lateralization are much higher. That was um, proven in Prodigy uh, 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 trial and MAC2 uh, trial when we actually assessed the uh, lower cancers, lower ampullar cancer. And I suppose that it's a superficial infiltration within the muscular lamp. There is venous infiltration along the uh, right uh, lower ampullar vein. And also there is a lymph node, but I see it's intact capsule, but there is heterogeneous signal. This is a sign of uh, internal, uh, this is one of the signs that the lymph node is impaired. Uh, this is no adjuvant chemoradiation therapy in our institution. What is the problem? We know that the venous invasion by MRI and pathomorphology is a very poor prognostic factor, but um, uh, even in bigger settings, we come across the problem that pathomorphological um, situation is really different. We should be teaching pathomorphologists uh, how to do this, and it's uh, very good uh, to invite them for our discussions. Uh, for them to see what we are currently doing. Yeah, probably you have already seen this slide, which was published in 2014. These are standards of data sets for uh, reporting cancers uh, from College of Pathologists. And uh, they uh, say that if you see venous invasion on MRI, please uh, inform your pathomorphologist. And if uh, it is, the invasion is lower, 30%, we should use uh, staining routinely. Now, this is mid uh, ampulla cancer. You can see that it is within a muscular layer. This is venous deposits and how they are associated with the uh, inner iliac uh, lymph node involvement on the left. I, uh, for long, I have not seen uh, involvement of lymph nodes of uh, lateral space if there are no other prognostic. Um, unfavorable prognostic factors. This is a bulky venous deposit, which is also uh, by, uh, bound to uh, the tumor uh, the, uh, with the uh, venous mesorectal deposits. You can see masses, bulky masses sitting over here. And if uh, you see something like extra and inner mural invasion, then in these patients, you should be attentive. Look at the obturative uh, pelvic uh, spaces. So here you can see involvement of lymph nodes, mesorectal uh, fatty tissue as well, and also on the right and on the left, the um, intact capsule but heterogeneous criteria. So that is a um, signal. This is one of the criteria. And um, uh, MRTRG grading system is used in order to assess treatment efficacy. So the response of primary tumor and also in the lymph nodes could be different. We do not use the size of lymph node as a such. Uh, if it is below three millimeters, then there is response no. We ignore the size of lymph nodes. But if there is an MR signal uh, modification, then yes, we say there is uh, uh, growth continued or there is response if uh, the patient uh, has uh, the, the change of signal within the venous deposit. Another difficulty of diagnostics is the following. If there is uh, chemotherapy in a patient with venous deposit, lymph node, mesorectal uh, fatty tissue, or lateral uh, cavities of the uh, pelvis after chemoradiation therapy, you do not see this lymph node, or you see some residual fibrosis, a pathomorphologist will uh, most probably report that there is a site of fibro fibrosis and he won't tell me what actually it was. A metastasis in the lymph node or in the venous deposit, it's difficult to prove. And that's why our treatment decisions are usually based upon MRI findings. This is one of the examples. This is a venous deposit of the inner uh, rectal vessels. You can see quite big venous deposit, which infiltrates into the vessels. And uh, after treatment, this is a plug of fibrosis, as we call it here. So it's a full response. It's just not even N1. One of patients with venous invasion and deposits in the mesorectal uh, tissue and venous deposits outside of the mesorectal space. You can see that after four courses of chemotherapy, this uh, response is not um, significant. 
and uh, the tumor responded, but uh, the, partially the deposits still sit in their uh, places. So initially, you have extramural uh, outgrowth in a patient and also a growth into the vessels, uh, rectal vessels on the left. And uh, also here, you have a um, connection with one of the veins. This is how the um, uh, uh, just uh, growth uh, uh, growth happens. And uh, you can see here uh, MRI signal. And most probably if it is M MRCT, then it will show calcificate. Most probably this is a very good sign of response. And in this case, I, uh, we are not even going to remove this lymph node. They consider that if you remove it, remove the uh, node with with uh, good signs um, signs of um, unfavorable prognosis, then the overall survival in lymph dissection will not uh, go up. That was my last slide. If you have questions, I will be very happy to take them now. And uh, we uh, don't actually remove such lymph nodes. We continue monitoring them. And um, if in a patient after chemotherapy it does not react, then it's uh, chemoradiation therapy additional. Thank you for your attention.